Hi there, I'm Kelly. Welcome to my channel. Are you thinking about planning a solo cruise? Have you thought about it for a long time and looked into it, but you're just hesitating to book that very first solo cruise? I understand because I was there at one time myself. Today I want to talk a little bit about the hesitant solo cruiser and give you just a few things to think about and some tips for moving forward and some tips for when you finally do decide to take that first solo cruise. Okay, so let's just have a conversation about why you might be hesitant to go ahead and book that first solo cruise. Some people will go into solo cruising just happy as can be, not a second thought. Some people are going to be a little hesitant, and I understand that feeling. So I guess my first question for you is, what's holding you back? Maybe you've never cruised solo before and you're just concerned that you'll get on the ship and be unable to enjoy yourself because it's a family atmosphere and there you are by yourself. Maybe you're concerned that all the things you normally enjoy just won't be as much fun by yourself, such as dining or port excursions or going to the shows. But maybe your concerns go deeper than that. Maybe you're concerned that you'll feel anxious and unsettled on the ship once you get there by yourself, and then you can't get off the ship, of course. Maybe you're concerned you'll have a panic attack. Maybe you're concerned about your safety traveling alone. Perhaps you normally traveled with a spouse or a partner, and this is your first time without them, and you just don't know what it's going to be like. Whatever your concerns are, I would invite you to unpack that and really take a look at what's holding you back and why. Think about your reasons. Ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen if my fears come true? Maybe weigh out the positive and negatives. Ask yourself if you never go on a solo cruise or never cruise again because you have to cruise alone. Will you miss it? Is it a big deal? How important is this to you? When you weigh out how much things mean to you, the gravity of your concerns, your willingness to push yourself outside your comfort zone, those things can add up to help you make that decision to go ahead and book that first solo cruise. My next question for you is, why do you want to go? If you're seriously thinking about a solo cruise, then you have a reason or multiple reasons for wanting to go on one. I would encourage you to think about that reason and really focus on it. Maybe you really want to get away from it all. Maybe cruising used to be your favorite thing and now you find yourself needing to go alone and you're just not sure if you want to do that. Maybe you want to get out and see the world. Whatever it is, think about that reason and keep that in your focus as you go about deciding whether or not to take that solo cruise. One tip I have that may seem obvious if you're going to go ahead and try a solo cruise, but you're really kind of concerned you won't like it, then start off with a short cruise. Pick something as close to home as possible, relatively easy to get in and out of, and start with a three or four night cruise. Okay, I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention it again. A lot of people hesitate over that very first solo cruise because of dining. People are worried they're going to end up eating at a table by themselves all week long with a book looking pathetic. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Now, if you're perfectly fine eating alone or you prefer to eat alone, you can do that. That is totally an option. If you're a little awkward about eating alone and you wouldn't mind some company, don't worry. I can pretty much guarantee you that whichever cruise you choose there will be other solo travelers on it. And you will have the opportunity at dinner to be seated with other solo travelers at a special table. Now this can be a lot of fun. You're gonna meet some really interesting people who like to get out and travel by themselves. It's a great way to have something to look forward to at the end of the day. You can check in with each other on port days and see what you each did. You can share photos. You can just get to know each other. Maybe you can build a little friendship that extends to going to bingo together or a show. 
So I'm just saying, don't picture yourself at a table full of families and you're the only solo traveler there and you're kind of in the way or you feel awkward. That's not the case. You will have opportunities to sit with other people just like you. And of course, you always have the opportunity to have room service or to go to a buffet. And if you really genuinely prefer to eat alone every meal, that's fine too. Just talk to your dining staff and they can arrange that. Okay, you've weighed the pros and cons and you've made your decision and you have booked that first solo cruise. Congratulations. Now let's talk about some things that you're gonna benefit from, some tips for that first solo cruise and some things to think about as you embark on your new adventure. This is the perfect time to do a little extra. Maybe when you cruise normally with family or friends, you know, you're on a budget and you're kind of watching how you spend your money. When you're traveling alone, maybe you have a little bit of extra money to spend now because it's just you. Maybe you can spend it on some jewelry you've always wanted on the ship or in a port. Maybe you can go on that extra expensive shore excursion you've always wanted to try. Maybe you can buy yourself something really nice in the gift shops or spend a little extra at the spa or the casino. Maybe you can get yourself a bottle of champagne or try one of the fancy restaurants on the ship. Whatever it is that has always intrigued you, now's the time to try it. My next tip for you, if you're a hesitant solo cruiser, is to have a plan. When you're cruising, if you're feeling a little anxious, if it becomes just a little bit more stressful than you planned, what is your plan for dealing with that? If emotions pop up that make you uncomfortable, what is your plan for dealing with them? Think ahead. Maybe have a friend that you can text or call anytime you want and she'll be there for you to hear all about your adventures and to remind you you're on vacation having a good time. Maybe you need to bring a good book, a crochet project, something to keep your hands busy, your mind busy in case you get a little nervous while you're on board. Maybe you want to go ahead and book some massages at the spa. Maybe there are certain situations you need to avoid to not make anxiety worse. Maybe you need to stay away from a crowded theater. Or maybe you need to make some friends. Or maybe you need to just find a lounge and a corner and, and tuck in with a book by yourself. Think ahead for these scenarios and just have some possibilities in mind so that you go into the situation ready. Give yourself permission to change plans. Maybe you thought you were going to go on some port excursions. Go ahead and cancel. You're not inconveniencing anybody because you're traveling alone. Maybe you thought you'd go to the shows and you made reservations. You don't have to go if you really don't want to. Um, maybe you thought you'd stay in the spa all week and really you'd just rather be in the casino. Maybe you'd rather end up in your room having room service and watching movies than going to the main dining room at night. That's fine. Remember, again, your vacation, do it your way. One of the great things about solo traveling is getting to change plans at the last minute because you're not consulting with anyone and you're not inconveniencing anyone. So do whatever makes you enjoy your cruise. Now, some people feel that if they're traveling alone, maybe it's kind of weird to go to the shows. I've never had that feeling. I mean, shows are one of the main reasons to cruise. It's one of the many wonderful things that a cruise ship offers. I recommend going to the shows by yourself. Why not? One thing I always do though when I'm traveling alone, I sit on the aisle near the back and that way if I'm not enjoying myself, I can get up and leave quietly, quickly, without climbing over anybody or disturbing anyone. This next tip might sound obvious, but a lot of people forget. Take a lot of photos and remember to put yourself in them. Don't just take a hundred photos of scenery. Put yourself in that photo once in a while. Do some selfies. Ask a person walking by to take a picture for you. If there's a gorgeous sunset, grab somebody and ask them to take a picture of you by the railing. Enjoy your vacation and come home with photos that show everything you did and remind people and remind yourself you were there. Okay, maybe you're a little bit hesitant about going into port. Maybe you're thinking about planning that solo cruise because the itinerary really appeals to you, but then you think, 
Am I really going to get out and pour it by myself and do things? I would recommend, if you feel that way, to consider a ship excursion. The ship will offer all kinds of excursions for you, and you're going to want to book those early, but look through them and find one that appeals to you. The great thing about a ship excursion is there is safety in numbers. You're going to be with a large group. You're not going to be out wandering by yourself, worrying that maybe something might happen, or you might get lost or not make it back to the ship on time. A ship-sponsored excursion will also guarantee you return to the ship. They will not leave without you, even if the bus gets a flat tire or something happens. So think about that. If you're hesitating over concerns about going out into port, then look into those ship excursions. One thing I always recommend to solo cruisers is to stay in touch with family and friends while you're on the cruise. Now, this is not an appropriate suggestion for everyone. There are some people that genuinely want to go disconnect. But for me, especially my first couple of solo cruises where I was concerned I'd be lonely or homesick, Staying in touch with my family was just a wonderful way to enjoy my cruise even more. I found myself taking pictures and thinking how much fun it would be to show my sons later on. Um, texting at the end of the day and catching up with my husband was really nice. Sometimes we would FaceTime and I would walk him around the ship and show him things. I loved taking pictures of all the different art and showing it to my son who was an art student at the time. Um, it helps me feel connected to home. It helps me feel less homesick, less alone. I'm enjoying my cruise, but staying in touch with my family and bringing them into my cruise experience makes it that much better for me. Now that might not work for everybody, but I'm just sharing what works for me and what I recommend. Having said that, I do want to add that you need to make sure your friends and family are interested in hearing about your cruise and getting texts and seeing photos. You don't want to bore anybody and then end up feeling awkward. Maybe have a conversation with them before you leave town. Hey, I'm going on this cruise. I'd love to stay in touch. I'm a little concerned I might get homesick or lonely. Is it okay if I text you maybe a little extra? Have that conversation and take your friends and family on the cruise with you. My next tip for your first solo cruise may sound obvious, but Pack wisely. Remember, you're one person traveling alone and managing your luggage by yourself. Obviously, you can't be having three roll-ons to manage all by yourself. So give some thought into what you're going to bring in your suitcase. Make sure everything fits. Make sure you have all your medications, your passport, all the things that you like to bring on a cruise. And just make sure that you can manage your bags by yourself. That wraps up all I have to say for now about cruising solo, even if you're just a little hesitant to go on that first trip. Now, if cruising is not that important to you, this may not be a helpful video. But if you're looking at solo travel and you've decided that cruising is the best option and you're just a little hesitant, I encourage you to think about it, watch a lot of YouTube videos, find some cruise discussion boards on Facebook or over at Cruise Critic, and just browse through there and just watch how other people are handling solo cruising. There is a lot out there for solo cruisers, and solo cruising is very much a thing. You will not be the only one on your ship. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. If you have a comment or suggestion for your fellow solo cruiser who might be a little anxious, please leave a comment. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a great day and enjoy your next cruise.